Hello, students. Good evening. How are you? Hope you are doing good. So, good evening, Itashi. Is my voice audible to you and the screen is visible to you? Yes, let me confirm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, best. So here we are. Uh, okay, Varshini. So here we are with our lecture number two, semiconductor. Okay, in the previous session, we have dealt with uh, types of, although we are going to recall it. Okay, so we will just wait for one minute more. So let the others to be joined. It. Meanwhile, you can uh, ask me about like G means if you are having any trouble with it, this exam. Your preparation is going good. Huh? All of you, the preparation part is okay, no? So I think oh. All of you, the interested candidate, have filled the form for J means exam. Huh? The exam would held in uh, April, first to fifteenth of April, would be the date. Okay. So please fill out the form because uh, many of you have think ki uh, I'm not prepared enough. I'm not prepared well. So these are the uh, I think these are the excuses that you are making to yourself, okay? Because if you do not sit in that examination, how do you know ki what is the level of that exam? Okay, how much preparation do I need? What I'm, where I'm standing? So these all information you will um, gain by just filling out that form and attempt that exam. Do not worry about the result firstly. Either you would crank the exam or you would not. So there are two possibilities. Probability of each possibility will be 50%. Okay. But it's up to you. The preparation, more you are prepared, more is the probability to succeed in that exam. Okay. Got it? So why I am telling you so? Because... Many of the aspirant uh, delay the form and do not fill out the form because they will think we are not prepared enough for this time and we would attempt it for the next time. And next time they make the same excuses. Because if you are, what else you would do in the next time if you are not doing yet? Next time, what will happen? So fill out the form and attempt the examination. Okay. Focus on the chapters that you are thinking ki, uh, I am strong enough in that chapter. These chapters are strong. Uh, I have the strong uh, uh, capability to hold this. Okay. Attempt those first. <coughs> Revise uh, solve previous year questions. Okay. And in previous year also, do not try to solve the question, similar question for the same time. Like uh, if any question force work done has been asked. Okay. So, and the next 10 question are just from the work done, only the unit has been changed. Only the numerical value has been changed. So do not try to attempt these questions. Like, Attempt one or two question, that's it. 
try to solve uh, which are different in concept a different conceptual question you will try to solve okay it will very benefit to you if you try to solve 100 question of same type rather than 10 question of different type that would more important to you okay that that will also help you to grasp the understand uh, grasp uh, the concept well okay so how many of you fill out the form just write why in the chat box how many of you fill out the form any one of you have filled the form what do you mean yeah Vimvarshini, Vesta, Hitashri, and all. Have you filled out the form? No, I'm not checking you. Ki main kuch aapko bolunga is pe to. No, no, no. I'm just asking. Have you filled out the form? Okay, tomorrow you will fill. Got it. How many of you think that you are prepared enough? How many? Hitashri, Testa, Nemvarshini. Durga is also here. The very first doubt in the student mind is that I'm not prepared enough. Okay. And to answer th uh, this question is pretty tough because there is no parameter who would judge ki aap prepare hai ya nahi. It will depends on the exam difficulty, the way you are studying. Okay. I would suggest to you that at least from now onwards, at least you dedicate your five hours. To specifically for G means okay, just to solving questions. Like if you are starting from uh, the motion in a straight line, so try to finish it in one day. I I also know that finishing uh, motion in a straight line one day is a difficult task. But you are dedicating your five hours to one chapter only. Okay. Got it. So what do you do? Just uh, if you have the previous year questions for JE mains examination, that is good. Otherwise, online you will get uh, thousands of questions previous year and all. So topic wise questions you will solve at least uh, for uh, 5 to 10 years previous year paper 5 to 10 years that will be sufficient so you will have the idea that what kind of questions has been asked and what should be the possible variation that can be happen in a question okay so and do not try to sit 5 hours continuously use the pomodoro technique Okay. Pomodoro technique is, I think you are aware about it, but if you are not, I'm telling you, Pomodoro technique is the best technique for the efficiency. Let me tell you, like, just for example, it all matters the efficiency of your mind hmm? how efficiently your mind is working so if this is the efficiency and this is the time period okay so generally what happens is your efficiency goes down as the time passes and you all will connect to it 
when you're sitting and studying, your mind will get tired and your efficiency would go downward. Okay. But it is in a one go. If you are studying for sitting for two plus hours. Okay. So your efficiency will reach to zero. And that stage you will see ki up from the magma kuch bhi nahi aana. Okay. Pura bhar gaya de me. Okay. So to avoid this, what you will do, you will do the time slap. Okay. You will study for 50 minutes. And then if this is the study, 50 minutes strict and then rest. For 10 minutes. In this 10 minutes, do not try to read books or whatever task you are doing. Just forget it. Play games if the available, like Temple Run or Subway Surfer is the best option. If necessary, I'm not recommending it. If necessary, just go outside, take deep breaths, and then after 10 minutes, just uh, go back to your sitting where wherever you are studying then this graph will this efficiency goes down but you have taken the break now brain has a fresh start again 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 so that much work you can extract okay by taking just 10 minute break and this is not the hypothetical concept it is the practical concept experimentally verified concept this is okay by the professor of harvard university got it so try to use this just take a timer of 50 minutes study very focusedly then take a rest of 10 minutes sit up from uh, where you are studying just leave that place for 10 minutes and then again come back to that place and start the studying for 50 minutes okay initially you will find trouble some of some of you will, will, will trouble but later on it will be it will be the best technique for study for you guys okay so here are some tips and yeah. semiconductor lecture number two we are going to start now in semiconductor electronics, we will do recall, then intrinsic semiconductor we are going to study and uh, then extrinsic semiconductor and then conduction in PNN type of semiconductor. This is the agenda for today class. Okay, Try, we are trying to our best to finish this. Okay, so let's just get started. Firstly, the recall part is the same I have mentioned here. The electronics, what is an electronics? Electronics is derived from electrons. So the regulated and uh, flow of electrons, regulated and controlled flow of electrons is termed as the electronics. Okay. The device which can regulate or control, which can regulate or control the flow of electrons in the circuit is termed as the electronics okay we have various types of electronics okay various types of electronics like uh, laptop computer desktop cpu and uh, your uh, wild charger is also electronics device smartphone okay anything that is that using this uh, concept of regulated flow of electron Regulating the current inside it, this is termed as the electronics. Got it. In everyday life, we have seen so much of use of this electronic devices. I think for nowadays, this is not possible to uh, move further without the use of electronics. Okay. So these are the essence of today's life. Got it. All the multimedia all the communication system is set up based on the electronic devices so if there is no electronic devices you cannot communicate 
from one place to another you cannot transport one thing to another you will have to set up the previous ancient uh, formula for transporting that will take so much of time got it so without electronics in today's world it is not going to be happen to survive okay these are some examples of the electronics the webcam cpu laptop computer desktop okay this hard drive is also electronics devices the printer <clears throat> i have told you in the previous class in every each and every electronics device is based on a material which is termed as the semiconductor so semiconductor is the base material for any of the electronic circuit like without semiconductor you can't uh, uh, think about the existence of electronics devices so that's how these semiconductor is important because semiconductor is a base material and without base material you can't construct anything okay so this is the ic i have told you integrated circuit this is transistor this is transistor and this you have already seen okay somewhere it is the led light emitting diode okay so basically we have two types of semiconductor first is the elemental which are naturally found in nature on earth which is the semiconductors called elemental semi semiconductor or natural semiconductor okay you can also term these semiconductor as intrinsic semiconductor we would do it later on okay later on we are going to discuss it elemental semiconductor are which are elementally found okay in in nature which are the pure compound that behaves as a semiconductor most generally they are silicon and germanium that we are using okay compound semiconductor we just formed by fusing two or more semiconductor material in each other that we are going to be found in compound semiconductor these are also termed as the organic semiconductor sorry inorganic inorganic semiconductor noted examples of these are the cadmium sulfide cds gallium arsenide anthracene polyfer polythiophene etc so these are the compound semiconductor in this elemental and semi elemental semiconductor only one atom is there but in this two atoms are combined so that is why it is a compound semiconductor okay. now semiconductor material pe we have discussed the classification of solid band theory we have discussed today we are going to discuss intrinsic semiconductor extrinsic or conduction in pn and type semiconductor now classification of solid we have classify the solid in three state which is metal insulator and semiconductor metal are those which can conduct the electricity okay they have high conductivity high conductivity they have i'm recalling it for you no this is the recollection part high conductivity low resistivity low resistivity okay that's how they are they are the one which can conduct the electricity got it now examples are copper and silver and aluminium i have also mentioned okay generally we use for wiring purpose we use aluminium material because uh, when uh, it reacts with moisture it forms a layer of aluminium oxide which act as a protector of these wires okay 
further corrosion of aluminium material can not take place the insulator are those which cannot conduct electricity at all okay. which means they have high high resistivity low conductivity okay examples of for there are glass rubber plastic you can also say etc yeah air is also an insulator okay because air cannot conduct electricity otherwise it is not possible as to for move you know in khuli hawa semiconductor are those which can conduct electricity by some external energy okay if you provide some external energy to these the material they will behave as the conductor got it so the electrical resistivity or conductivity intermediate to metal and insulator i have told you yesterday okay so the examples are silicon and germanium now the energy band theory we have discussed energy band theory that according to quantum laws it is said that in isolated atom the energy levels of an electron are fixed which means we have shells na k shell l shell m shell so these having fixed amount of energy fixed energy so if you want to put an electron to k shell so you have to provide this electron which is required for k shell like if k shell for example just for example if k shell required 1.2 electron volt of energy then exactly 1.2 electron volt energy you have to provide this electron to send this electron in k shell okay based on that data if this is sodium material i have taken for example here this is the configuration for uh, sodium metal so yeah if two atoms of sodium combined with each other each, each other so they have 1s 1s okay 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 okay now in sodium atom also these are the energy levels these spdf are the subshells subshells has their own energy levels which means this 1s has the lowest energy level 2s is the greater than now it is greater than this this is greater than this and 3s is greater than everyone got it which means the electron present in the outermost shell like 3s1 has the highest energy which means it requires very low energy to break the bond and move freely so this is the lowest energy required lowest energy required lowest energy required to take an out this electron okay the innermost cell innermost cell are told as valence cell and the shell which are responsible for the transfer of electron and gaining of electron are termed as the conduction cell okay so this is the outermost shell is the outermost shell yeah samsung lab 2 you have raised your hand multiple times if you are facing any kind of doubt you can just write it in the chat box got it the outermost shell is what conduction cell this in solid 
they have crystal lattice structure so these atoms are very close to each other you have seen this this is the crystal lattice in which atoms are present in the corner so these atoms are very close to each other so the energy level in solid behaves differently in other free electron than an isolated atom okay now the valence band so these energy bands are very energy uh, levels are very small so that is why we are uh, calling them as valence band and conduction band so the conduction band is required for the conduction of electricity okay now the gap between the conduction band and valence band are the decidable factor okay so this is termed as eg e gap is the e conduction minus e valence so for an electron to jump from valence band to conduction band this gap should be optimum which means which can be jumpable okay based on this gap based on this gap we discuss these types of material okay. so there are two types of energy band diagram possible for metal first is the when valence band is partially empty and conduction band is partially filled okay so with a little extra energy the electron can easily reach to the energy levels of conduction band got it so if you will see the second possibility is the valence band overlaps with the conduction band so there is no energy required to move this electron from valence band to the conduction band because here you can see the lower most energy of conduction band is reside inside the most energy most of valence band so it can easily jump off to the this electron can easily jump off to the conduction band so that is why they have conducted the electricity okay the metals so lowest level of conduction band needs less energy than the highest level in the valence band okay so this electron in valence band overflow into conduction band and are free to move about the crystal for conduction of electricity okay. insulator ke, uh, case mein these gaps are very high eg is very very high, large okay so not possible not possible to jump okay electron ke liye it is not possible to jump from valence band to conduction band by the thermal excitation okay so that is why these electrons or these materials are not capable of conducting the electricity got it energy band in semiconductor so energy gap of semiconductor is less than energy gap of metal sorry of insulator and is greater than the energy gap of metal so if you provide the sufficient amount of energy this electron can you can see this electron can jump to the conduction band okay so for silicon it is 1.1 electron volt and for germanium it is 0.74 electron volt if you provide this amount of energy to silicon or germanium they will behave as the conductor okay so no electron has energy to jump from valence band to conduction band and hence the crystal is an insulator but for what when absolute zero temperature is there and which is not possible 
it is not possible to achieve this temperature zero kelvin okay but at room temperature this can this gap can be jumpable okay now what are the holes when energy uh, when the electron moves from valence band to conduction band it will create a vacant energy level in valence band these vacant energy gaps energy gaps or energy levels in valence band behaves as the positive charge okay and so these are uh, these are also crucial in the conduction of electricity okay and these vacant energy levels of positive charge assumed positive charge as termed as the holes okay so when this electron move from it electron move from valence band to conduction band the holes are created so these unfilled region are termed as the holes in valence band so when an electron leaves the valence band it leaves some energy levels in band as unfilled okay so we can take them as positive charge carriers got it so holes are nothing but holes are positive charge per year so movement of holes is considered as the positive charge moving from one position to another okay now here is a question for you guys and try to solve it you just have to give the uh, answer in options for the given structure of valence and conduction band we can see that the valence band of the material is partially filled determine the nature of material in terms of its conductivity so here this conduction band is partially partially filled and this valence band is partially empty so we have seen this types of possibility in energy gap so what is that material option a is conductor option b is insulator option c is uh, semiconductor and option d you can't say so option d i am removing it, you can say this okay so option d is not the part of it only a b c are the possibility so tell me what is the answer is it a is it b or is it c just write in the chat box okay i'm waiting for your response nandan is here hitashri is also here samsung lab 2 jnv nzsr pratibha and eight others okay so what is the correct option tell me i want answer from you guys okay here the okay jnv njsr is saying that option b is correct nandan is also saying this option b is correct okay only two of you guys what about hitashri what about samsung lab 2 what about pratibha okay. so option b you are you guys are seeing but the correct option is e. how now move back to the question why b most of you jnv njsr and who have answered this is also a bravely work hai na har kisi ke bas ki baat nahi hoti answer karna and you guys have answered it's good so what you are thinking ki there are gaps is is present here so insulator have gaps but if nothing is mentioned about the energy levels of gap 
like it is greater than three electron volts or it is less than three electron volt you cannot say that this is the configuration for insulator but the one configuration that we have seen that when valence bond is partially filled partially empty and conduction band is partially filled so we can say that the energy the electron can jump through the conduction band and this is the possibility for this is the possibility for the conductor the conductor has two possibility one is when partially filled valence bond is there and partially filled conduction band is there and second one is when the valence band when the conduction band this is the conduction band overlaps with valence band okay so the correct option is option a not this i hope you are clear with this thank okay. you so the next question is this the difference in variation of resistance with the temperature in a metal and a semiconductor arises essentially due to difference in the first is the crystal structure second is the variation of number of charge carrier with temperature types of bonding and variation of scattering mechanism with temperature so i will tell you here the resistance of the conductor and semiconductor here will depends on the variation of number of charge carriers because if you see in conductor in conductor if you give some amount of heat energy the electron present in the valence band can easily go through the conduction band okay and these electrons are having the heat energy they have absorbed the heat energy that is provided by thermal agitation process by heating but in semiconductor if you will see you will firstly have to clear that gap which is less than 3 electron volt okay then you will have some electron in the conduction band so the number of charge carrier here are deciding factor for the variation in temperature okay also you can learn this formula that resistivity at some temperature t is equal to resistivity rho naught 1 plus alpha time t this is the variation of resistivity for conductors okay so by increasing the temperature the resistivity will increase okay now the correct option is b in this a strip of copper and another germanium are cooled from room temperature to 80 kelvin okay room temperature is let's say 273 kelvin Nine. It is three hundred. Okay. Twenty-five to twenty-seven degree you will take, and if you just add two hundred and seventy-three to it, it will convert into the Kelvin. So this is the room temperature you have. Room temperature. So when we cool down any metal the resistivity will decrease so when resistivity resistivity will decrease the conductivity will increase so here if you will see here the co copper is metal conductor but semiconductor behaves differently when you increase the temperature rather than increasing the resistivity it decreases it, it resistivity and when you decrease the temperature the resistivity will increase okay 
got it so correct option is c here this the copper strip decreases because temperature is going down rho t is equals to rho plus 1 plus alpha t so if temperature is decreasing this rho will also decrease okay but for germanium it increases for semiconductor semiconductor decrease temperature decrease so resistivity increase got it so keep this in mind now so can an in intrinsic semiconductor conduct electricity at zero kelvin no because at zero kelvin there is no heat energy that you can provide to that electron present in valence band so how it is possible for the le that electron to jump into the conduction band so there will be no flow of electron if electron is not flowing then there is no current okay and there is no current so there is no electricity which means option b is correct okay now what are the intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor are the pure element i have told you or the pure compound okay. the intrinsic semiconductor is made up of pure element or pure compound which is freely found in found on the earth surface or earth crust you will see okay so widely used semiconductor are silicon and germanium i have told you okay silicon atomic number is 14 just remember it and for germanium it is 32 and here are the configuration of it 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p2 p subshell has three part okay in which in one subshell we can fill two electron so maximum six electron can come into p but if you see the si only two electrons are present and rest four is rest four spares are vacant and similarly in the germanium so valency how many space are vacant that is the valency valency of silicon and germanium r is 4 so they are tetravalent compound okay these are tetravalent compound or tetravalent element you will see got it okay so at room temperature intrinsic semiconductor has a very low resistive uh, very low conductivity because there are very few charge carriers in that you will see in the outermost cell in the outermost cell only two electrons are present okay so the charge carriers are very low in this like intrinsic semiconductor so that is why at room temperature they are not being very conductive material so most of the most of our appliances we work on the home uh, room temperature and above at it okay so if they are not conducting enough at room temperature so they have no use for us so we have to make them we have to make them more conducting okay so for silicon you will see in germanium four valence electrons that you have i have discussed it okay so silicon and germanium share their four electron valence electron with four nearby atoms as of now this is the silicon atom or germanium whatever you can consider it is surrounded by its four four neighboring atom because in the outermost cell of it if you talk about silicon in the outermost cell it has four electron so four 
it can form a covalent bond with four nearby silicon atom and they can share their bond share their electron in covalent covalent bonding only sharing of electron is possible we can we can share the electron look here the one electron is used by this silicon atom and one electron of this so these form the covalent bond these are the covalent bond formed by this silicon atoms okay this is the crystal lattice of these atoms okay now crystal material is formed by the covalent bonding of each atom with its neighbor okay and these crystal are very closely packed got it these crystals are these atoms are very closely packed in crystal in crystal lattice okay now these are the germanium atoms these are the outermost shell ke four electrons it have one two three four for each of the germanium atom and they will form the what they will form what covalent bond with each other now the energy gap of germanium atom eg4 germanium is 0.74 electron volt so since these atoms are very closely packed na so the electrons these electrons are very nearby to each other very nearby to this this is very nearby to this so they will exert a very high repulsive force to these atoms which are present in the outermost shell and i have told you that for electrons present in the outermost shell there is no much amount of energy required to break that bond although if you have pay attention to your chemistry lecture in covalent bonding they are very easy they are the easiest one to break not the easiest one but the energy required to break a covalent bond is not too much high okay so what is happening this electron one electron could jump from here and create a valency okay and become free when you give the external heat or external excitation energy to these atoms look the heat energy is provided to these germanium atoms then one of the electron will move because it gain the sufficient amount of energy and it also present in the outermost shell so outermost shell at uh, electrons require less energy to move or to break that bond got it so when we provide some heat energy to this electron it will move from its covalent bond to the free part now this is the thermion you can say thermion because this ion or this electron is generated by the thermal energy so that is why we will term that as thermion or you can also say it as the free electrons because it is free from its bonding so it is the free electron you will see but you can see here the vacant space is created which is positively charged that we would consider what is this called this vacancy is called as hole i have discussed it earlier okay and it has a positive unit charge why it is positive because if this electron come back to here it will neutralize it and there is no charge present on this side which is possible for here this covalent bonding has no charge so we have to maintain the neutrality of this so that is why if the negative charge has been free so there must be a positive charge attained by this side okay you can also see from here the electron move from valence band to conduction band okay 
again if another atom another electron has gained the energy and move from here to here move from the valence band to conduction band for the conduction of electricity now what is happening these vacancies are not permanent these vacancies can also be filled by the relative neighborhood electrons so what happens this electron you will see here in this emanation this electron would jump to fill this vacancy which is created by the this electron this electron number 2 so rather than having mo a motion of electron only we are also having a motion of hole here so holes are holes also move inside the inside the valence bond okay got it now i hope you are clear with this so these electrons which are present on the sides in the covalent bonding which are not moving these electrons are termed as these electrons are termed as the valence electron okay these are the valence electron as they do not take part in the conduction and this electron this is the covalent bond okay and these are the broken covalent bond you will see these are the broken covalent bond this in which the gap is created these are the broken covalent bond and these are the free electrons which are which have broken the covalent bond by gaining the heat energy and move from valence band to conduction band but you will see the charge carrier here if you count the electrons there are many electrons present in the covalent bond but what amount of free electrons you have only one or two so at room temperature the conduction of these electrons the conduction of this germanium atom is very low because we have very low amount of the free electrons okay now in intrinsic semiconductor the number of thermally generated electrons which has thermally generated means which have gained the thermal energy and move out from the covalent bond so these electrons are thermally generated electrons they are always equals to the number of holes that are created and it is very obvious one electron is moving one hole is creating okay so the number of electron moved from the covalent bond is exactly equals to the number of holes created okay so here you will see if ne if any is the concentration of electrons electrons per unit volume np is the concentration of hole holes per unit volume then this ne is equals to np this is the relation and this ne is equals to any np is equals to the ni ni is nothing but the intrinsic charge concentration okay or intrinsic carrier concentration okay so intrinsic carrier con uh, concentration is exactly equals to number of holes created per unit volume or number of electrons moved out from the covalent bond or number of free electrons per unit volume okay now conduction in intrinsic semiconductor how the conduction is happening although you have seen it like the free electrons have moved these are the free electrons and these have gained the thermal energy move out from the covalent bond creating a hole here all the positive sign you will see as a hole okay then if you connect this with the external electric field so this plate is positively charged this plate is negatively charged so this negatively charged electron 
will repel these free electrons to into this direction okay or this electron you can also say these electrons are attracted towards this positive charge okay now if this electron is moving from here to here which means there is a possibility that it can fill this gap so the new electron will come here so you will see when this electron fill this gap fill this hole there is another hole created here you can also say in other word the hole has also moved from here to here which means we can consider we have considered the positive charge for the holes so positive charge is also attracted to the negative plate so electrons move in this direction and holes move in this direction okay you can see the electron is moving in this direction in the emanation okay. you will see the electron move in move to the positive plate then this electron come and the hole is being created to hole is being transferred to this place okay got it again the hole has been created here so it seems as to be that hole is also moving in this direction okay so the current which flow in an intrinsic semiconductor consists of both electron and hole current because hole is also considered to be positive an electron itself okay is the negative part so electron is also contributing a current and hole is also contributing a current now these are the electrons moving in towards the positive charge and these are the holes moving towards the negative charge now the direction of current created by the free electron will be opposite to the flow of electron okay so this is the direction of ie you will say and for hold because it is a positive charge and direction of current is given by the positive charge carrier direction of movement of positive charge carriers so this is hole current ih and this is the external current that we are providing so this is ie and ih are in the same direction so you can say that i total current here is ie the current produced by free electrons plus the current produced by holes okay so at room temperature the conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor is very low therefore no important electronic device cannot be developed using these semiconductor because the number of charge con concentration the free electrons are very low so if the concentration of free electrons is very low concentration of hole will also be very low so the conduction current that ie and ih are very low that is why the these uh, devices are not made by these semiconductor at room temperature okay so for that we have to do some another thing like we have to dope some of the impurities to this intrinsic semiconductor and that semiconductor is termed as the extrinsic semiconductor or doped semiconductor so that we will discuss in next lecture okay till then and uh, till here if you have any kind of doubt you can ask otherwise lecture is over thank you so much for being attentive okay thank you so much if you have any kind of doubt you can ask